Well, the GOP tax bill is getting closer to getting done, and the hope is to deliver the reconciled tax bill to President Trump's desk before the holidays. Once the new tax rules become the law of the land, just what impact could they have on the equity markets further next year? Joining me from New York, David Pearl. He is co-chief investment officer of Epic Investment Partners. Uh, David, good to see you. Uh, let me just jump right in here. We've seen the markets, of course, rally when President Trump was elected, rallying again, of course, when we saw every little movement, John McCain getting on board. And then, of course, uh, when we had news that the bill was getting closer and closer to uh, getting done. Is everything priced into the market right now in terms of upside? Well, our view is no. What happened is um, the market was driven by valuation over the last number of years as rates went to zero. Now, uh, that, that reversed uh, July of last year. Rates are beginning to go up in the United States, and they'll probably continue to go up. Valuation, therefore, probably doesn't go much higher, which means the, the market is driven by earnings. And that's okay because earnings are going to be good because the economy is accelerating. Uh, we've just experienced 3% GDP growth, which hasn't happened in the U.S., for uh, more than uh, a decade. Uh, so it is actually accelerating, and the tax cut is another stimulus to further accelerate the U.S. economy, and therefore profits, and profits will drive the market. That's a nice answer. I think people want music to many people's ears in terms of the upside that could be coming. Let me ask you, though, when you look at specific sectors, we did see a bit of, uh, I'd say, almost rotation happening in the past few days. Uh, you know, money moving out of some of the tech, which the people think may not, may get a, a less of a disproportionate benefit from the, the tax uh, cuts to the financials. Where do you see some outperformance in terms of sectors in the next while? Yeah, well, we definitely see financials as being... Uh, a great place to be. That's been the case since rates bottomed. So financials are driven by the economy, because better economy means more loans. Um, you know, higher rates means more profit, because banks make profit by the spread between what they borrow and what they lend out. Uh, there's also in the U.S. a lot less regulation, so banks are returning capital that they had to pay to the U.S. government in fines, so uh, more return of capital. And uh, lastly, they're high taxpayers, so this is the reason uh, the sector rotation has happened, is people have realized that banks which are paying uh, 30 to 40 percent tax could go down to as low as 20 percent. That is a big positive. It could increase earnings something like 10 percent uh, incrementally. So all of that put together is great. Plus, banks had lagged over the last five years. They're at the lowest valuations of almost any group in the market. They're something like 10 to 14 times earnings. So they're really at a big discount to the rest of the market. Would one be able to say that? Do you think that will, will, will financials take the leadership then over tax? Or are we going to see the two of them kind of driving the market forward? Well, it's still about earnings growth. I think what's happened is there are some tech stocks that have had huge valuations. And the question is, will earnings drive uh, the returns from here? Well, some of the FANG stocks, like Netflix, which really don't have earnings, it's going to be tough. Whereas some of the more mature tech companies, and here I'm talking about Apple, Microsoft, Google, who have really big profits, uh, can grow those profits very well in this environment. And one added benefit, they have a huge amount of overseas cash, and part of the tax uh, package is allowing them to repatriate uh, the, the cash at a very low tax rate, something like 5 to 10 percent. So Apple has $260 billion overseas, Microsoft about 130, Google almost 100, uh, and they're going to bring it back and have this cash, pay it at a low tax, and can either grow the business or pay you back, basically increase uh, dividends or share buybacks. So all of this is very good news for the big tech stocks. Let me ask you, um, you know, good news for the big tech stocks, good news for the banks. Um, I don't want to be pessimistic, but I just want to ask you, when you look at this, does anything have the potential of derailing what is sounding to be a quite bullish scenario? Well, I do think some of the uh, more um, high-flying tech names, as I was alluding to, and a lot of these make no money, like Tesla, you know, that could be a problem in this market because rates are going up. And if you're burning cash, you eventually have to borrow money. The cost of capital is going to go up. 
So really, we prefer companies that generate cash, that are profitable, that don't have to borrow as rates go up. So there really will be a differentiation among even tech stocks between those that are making money, those that are not making money. And clearly, areas that are very defensive, let's say uh, food stocks, consumer staples, utilities, it's going to be hard to accelerate earnings growth because they just don't. I mean, you know, people don't eat that much more, even if they're wealthy. Utilities can't grow any faster. They're regulated. So you would like economically sensitive stocks. So you could add in industrials and consumer discretionary stocks to the good list and defensive stocks being the ones that already are at kind of high valuations and don't have that much earnings growth potential from here. So it will be more of a stock picking market based on valuation and particularly the ability to grow earnings. Let me ask you then, uh, given it's a stock picking market, would you be kind enough to give us a couple of names that you like right now in this environment? Sure. So, uh, you know, financials, definitely Bank of America as one of the largest money centers. What you would prefer is a domestic bank so that they're paying a high tax rate. That's B of A. They're paying about 31 percent in uh, taxes. They are generating a lot of cash. And up until this year, they were paying something like $16 billion in fines to the U.S. government. And they don't have to do that now, thanks to the new administration, uh, less, reg less onerous regulation. So they're going to be paying it back to the shareholders in share buyback and dividends. Morgan Stanley, same kind of thing. They have a great business. As rates go up, it helps both Bank of America and Morgan Stanley. Uh, if you think of money market accounts, they were paying zero, so Morgan Stanley couldn't even charge a fee. Now that they're yielding, let's say, three quarters of a percent, they can at least get paid for this. So they go from losing money to making money on just money market accounts, and that's almost a trillion dollars for them. Uh, the last one in financials um, would be uh, Discover Financial Services. They pay very high taxes, 37 percent, and of course, with a better economy, there's going to be more growth of credit card sales and loans. Now, in tech, I kind of mentioned this Apple, uh, Microsoft, and Google. They're actually at fairly low valuations. Apple, to this day, is at a big discount to the mm -hmm. market. Um, at, on a free cash flow basis, it's at 12 times. Microsoft on free cash flow is 14 times cash plus all the cash in the bank. And the last one being Google, which has actually lagged the market over some period of time, and they are usually profitable. So we do think those stocks, given low valuations and good earnings growth, and uh, will do very well in this environment. David, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. David Pearl, co-chief investment officer of Epic Investment Partners, joining us earlier from New York.